Hi, I'm Rachel. And before I dive into our story today, please hit like and subscribe to follow more of my journey. Today, I'll share a tale of my daughter Emily's 10th birthday. A day that should have been perfect. But well, life had other plans. The sun was shining, the balloon swayed gently in the breeze, and I could hear the laughter of children as they darted through the colorful streamers draped all over our backyard. I double-checked every detail. The picnic tables were draped in bright pink tablecloths, plates piled high with snacks and cupcakes, and in the center of it all, the piece de resistance, a spectacular unicorn cake standing proudly on the dessert table. Mom, this is the best birthday ever! Emily hugged me, her eyes twinkling with excitement. I'm glad you think so, honey. Go have fun, and let me know when you want to start the treasure hunt. As I watched her run off to join her friends, my sister Karen sidled up next to me with a mischievous grin. You've outdone yourself this time, Rachel. Everything looks wonderful. Thanks, Karen. I just want everything to be perfect for her. She deserves it. We chatted and laughed, greeting the arriving guests. My parents, always the supportive pillars in our life, helped with the food, while my best friend Jess managed the games, hurting excited children with the patience of a saint. Everything's going smoothly, huh? Jess winked at me from across the yard. Just as planned, I replied, just as a silver sedan pulled up outside. A knot formed in my stomach as Linda stepped out, her heels clicking sharply against the pavement as she approached the gate. Linda, with her perfectly styled hair and a too-wide smile, waved at some of the parents. Hello, everyone. Oh, what a lovely setup. I forced a smile, keeping my tone even. Linda wasn't expecting you here. Well, I thought I'd drop by. Wish Emily a happy birthday. Her eyes scanned the decorations with a thinly veiled critique. Quite the colorful arrangement you've got. Emily loves it. That's all that matters. I could feel Karen's protective stare, but she remained silent, her presence a reassuring strength at my side. Of course, of course. Linda's gaze lingered on the unicorn cake. Such an interesting choice for a cake. It's her favorite. I stiffened, sensing her intent to start something. I see. Linda smiled, her tone dripping with condescension. Well, I just hope it tastes as good as it looks. As she mingled, I watched her like a hawk, my nerves on edge. Emily, oblivious to the tension, tugged on Linda's dress. Do you want to play a game with us? That sounds lovely, darling, but maybe later. Linda patted her head, her smile not quite reaching her eyes. The afternoon wore on, with laughter and the sounds of celebration filling the air. But beneath the surface, the uneasy truce hung fragilely, like the thin strings holding up the colorful piñatas. As Linda circled back to the dessert table, her eyes fixed on the unicorn cake, I knew trouble was brewing. Let's sing happy birthday, I announced, hoping to cut off any drama before it started. As everyone gathered, singing joyfully, Linda leaned in towards the cake, her hand suspiciously close to the delicate icing. I watched, heart pounding, as her fingers seemed to twitch. Oh, Rachel, did you really think this party theme was a good idea? It's a bit juvenile, don't you think? Linda's voice cut through the festive noise, her eyes scanning the setup with a barely concealed smirk. It's perfect for Emily. She loves it, and that's what matters. I kept my voice steady, trying to mask the irritation that Linda's presence alone stirred up. Linda laughed, a sound that seemed to crawl under my skin. Well... I suppose when you don't have much experience with kids, you go with what you think is best. Actually, Linda, I've been doing this for ten years. Every year with Emily. And every year she's been overjoyed. How many have you attended? Remind me? She flicked an imaginary speck of dust from her sleeve, ignoring my question. Speaking of joy, I do wonder if that cake is as dry as it looks. Shall we test it? No need to bother, Linda. It's as delightful as it appears, and we'll all enjoy it later, together. I moved to block her subtly advancing hand, not so subtly aiming towards the cake with a fork she'd procured from somewhere. Karen, watching the exchange, sidled up to Linda with a sweet smile plastered on her face. Oh, Linda, I didn't know you were into baking critique. Rachel made that cake herself, you know, a real labor of love. Linda's smile faltered. Oh, really? Homemade? How quaint. You know, Linda... It's always a pleasure to see someone trying so hard to fit in. Maybe one day you'll get the hang of it. Karen shot back, 
her tone dripping with as much saccharin as she could muster. Ignoring the barbs, I redirected my focus to the children playing. All right, everyone, who's ready for games? Jess, could you start the treasure hunt? Absolutely, Rachel. Kids, gather around, Jess called, diverting attention away from the growing tension. As the kids cheered and clustered around Jess, Linda leaned closer to me, her voice low. You might control the games, Rachel, but you don't control John. Remember that. I don't need to control anyone, Linda. I'm here for my daughter's happiness. Can you say the same? Linda paused, her mask of civility slipping. You think you're so perfect, don't you? Always playing the martyr? I sighed, glancing over at Emily, her laughter mingling with the other children's. This isn't about me or you, it's Emily's day. Can we at least agree on making it special for her? For a moment, it seemed like Linda might relent, but then her eyes hardened. I'll make it memorable, all right? As the day progressed, Linda floated around the party, her comments acidic under the guise of playfulness. But her true colors showed when she accidentally bumped into the table, nearly toppling the unicorn cake. Only Michael's quick reflexes saved the day, his hand steadying the masterpiece just in time. Clumsy me, Linda chirped, not fooling anyone. Very clumsy, Michael agreed, giving me a look that said everything without a single word more. Why don't you help me with the drinks, Linda? Away from the cake. As they walked away, I breathed a sigh of relief. The cake was safe, the party salvaged, and Emily remained blissfully unaware of the undercurrents swirling around her birthday bash. The afternoon sun dipped lower, casting long shadows over the backyard as the party continued. My mind, however, was far from the festivities. It was focused on Linda and her not-so-subtle sabotage attempts. Lisa, do you remember that little project you did with home security? I whispered, pulling her aside under the guise of discussing party logistics. Sure, the hidden cameras? What about it? Lisa's eyes narrowed, sensing the seriousness in my tone. I need your help. Linda is up to something, and I want to catch her in the act, once and for all. I think it's time John saw who he's really dealing with. Lisa nodded, understanding immediately. I can set up a couple of cameras. We'll have everything recorded. Give me 15 minutes. As Lisa worked her tech magic, I mingled with the guests, keeping one eye on Emily, who was happily oblivious to the adult dramas unfolding around her. Karen approached me, a concerned look crossing her face. What's the plan, Rachel? I saw that look between you and Lisa. We're making sure Linda's actions don't go unnoticed anymore. It's for Emily's sake, I replied, watching as Lisa gave me a subtle thumbs up from behind the garden shed. The cameras were in place, hidden among the decorations and pointing at key areas, including the cake table where Linda had already tried her antics. Not long after, Linda made her way back to the dessert table, this time commenting loudly enough for nearby guests to hear. I just need to adjust these plates. Wouldn't want anything to fall and ruin the party, right? Lisa sidled up next to me, her phone in hand, showing live feed from the cameras. Got her. Anything she does now, we'll have it recorded. As the party drew to a close, Linda's facade began to crack. Perhaps it was the wine, or maybe the pressure of being under my watchful eye, but her veneer of pleasantness slipped. She sidled up to John, who had just finished helping a group of kids with their goodie bags. You know, John, I really think Emily would be better off with a more mature influence around her. Not just these childish parties, Linda said, her voice dripping with insincerity. I watched as John's face tightened, his patience wearing thin. This party was perfect for Emily, Linda. It's exactly what she wanted. What are you really trying to say? Before Linda could respond, Emily ran up, tugging at John's arm. Daddy, did you see the unicorn cake? Mommy made it just for me. The joy in Emily's voice was clear, and John's expression softened as he lifted her into his arms. I did see it, sweetheart. Your mom did an amazing job. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Linda's jaw clench. Her attempt to undermine me backfired, exposing her to John in a light she hadn't intended. As guests began to leave, thanking us for a wonderful day, I felt a cautious relief. The cameras had captured more than enough of Linda's bitterness and attempts at manipulation. Let's review the footage tomorrow, Lisa suggested, as she discreetly collected her equipment. Then you can decide how to show John. I nodded, grateful for her help and for the support of my friends and family. Emily's happiness today was proof enough that no matter what Linda tried, 
She couldn't spoil the love and care that had built around my daughter. But now, with evidence in hand, it was time to protect that happiness more directly. As the birthday party wound down, the last of the pink and yellow twilight faded into a serene dusk. It was finally time to settle things. The air was tense with anticipation, but I held my ground, ready to reveal the truth about Linda's actions. John, can I have a word with you in private? I asked, my voice steady, betraying none of the nervous energy that fluttered in my stomach. Of course, Rachel, John replied, a frown knitting his brow as he followed me into the living room, away from the remaining guests. Once we were alone, I turned to face him, my resolve firm. John, there's something you need to see. This isn't easy, but I believe it's important for both you and Emily. I handed him a tablet where Lisa had uploaded the footage from the hidden camera. His expression changed from confusion to shock as the video played, showing Linda's calculated attempts to sabotage the party, including her near destruction of the birthday cake. I don't understand. Why would Linda do this? John murmured, his voice barely above a whisper as the reality of the situation began to sink in. John, I think it's time you saw the full picture of who Linda really is, I said gently, yet with an undeniable edge of seriousness. She's been manipulative and harmful, not just today, but consistently over time. As John absorbed the information, his face hardened with determination. I need to handle this now. Thank you, Rachel. I can't believe I didn't see it before. We returned outside where the guests were gathered, chatting amiably under the string lights. John called for everyone's attention, and the chatter died down. He held the tablet up, the evidence clear for all to see. Everyone, I have something important to address, John began, his voice carrying through the crisp evening air. Linda has been deceitful, and her actions today have shown her true character. The crowd murmured, glances shooting toward Linda, who stood frozen, her face pale. As John continued to explain, her eyes darted around, seeking an ally, but finding none. I am sorry for this disruption, and I assure you, it will be dealt with appropriately. Linda and I will no longer be together, John declared firmly, the finality of his words hanging heavily in the air. Linda stormed off, her exit marked by a cold silence that contrasted sharply with the warmth of the gathered friends and family. As she disappeared into the night, a collective sigh of relief swept through the crowd, and the tension began to dissipate. Rachel, thank you for protecting Emily, John said, turning to me with a grateful smile. How about we give Emily a proper end to her birthday? With John's support, we rallied everyone together for a re-celebration. The cake, miraculously still intact, was brought out again amidst cheers. Emily beamed, surrounded by her friends and family, as we all sang, Happy Birthday. The joy in her eyes was the sweetest victory. As the last guest departed, I looked around at the backyard, now quiet, the remnants of a party that had almost been ruined. But in the end, love and truth had prevailed. We had not just survived the ordeal, we had triumphed, reinforcing the bonds that truly mattered, family and true friendship. Reflecting on the day, I realized that no matter the challenges, standing up for what's right was always worth it. And as I put Emily to bed, her smile lingering in her sleep, I knew we were stronger than ever. Now that our story has come to an end, I have a question that might stir some thoughts. What would you do if you were in John's position, discovering someone close was causing harm under the guise of care? Would you confront them as John did, or handle it differently? I'm really curious to see your thoughts and stories in the comments below. Have you ever faced a similar situation? How did you deal with it? Sharing your experiences can really help others who might be in the same boat. And if you found this story compelling, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. We have lots of interesting stories and discussions coming up that you won't want to miss. Your interaction not only supports the channel, but also builds our community. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.